Oh my goodness, it's freezing. Brr. We had, like, the weather just shifted, like, so fast tonight. I think that the, the temperature dropped, like, 40 degrees in the matter of a couple of hours. Yeah, while I was at work, it started, like, raining and then sleeting and then snowing. And we were like, oh, my God. <laughs> We're all gonna die because Nashville or Tennessee, we don't get a lot of snow. And so we're just not equipped with like salt trucks and things that like prepare the roads for people to drive in the ice and in the snow. And so even though it's like, you, I know how to drive in the ice and snow because I've lived in colder places at times, but it's just the, our roads, like we don't have salt. We don't have all those things that make it safer. So it was, uh, we were all just like on pins and needles. And so our last few reservations came in at 830 and my table was the last one to leave. And they were like, are you guys closed? And I was like, I looked around and it was like literally like a dark empty building. We were like cleaning and like putting the chairs up. They were the last table. They were, they'd already been given last call. And like that, like the desserts pastry chef was about to close down their like station or whatever. So I just figured they understood that, yeah, we were closing. They're like, oh God, sorry, we didn't realize. And then they didn't even realize there was like a blizzard going on outside. Then they were like, oh my God. And so a few minutes later, like we closed, finished closing on the restaurant. I walk outside and my car is like a frost box. Like it's like an ice box. Like it's just an ice cube. And I was like, oh shit, it's going to take forever for my car to thaw out. Because I'm just going to sit there with the heat on and the defrost because I don't have a, an ice scraper. <laughs> And I always just, I forget to like make sure and have one until it's too late. And then I'm like, oh, I'll just use an old gift card. And then, <laughs> and then it's like, that's what happens every year. So I get into my car and I turn it on to crank up the heat. And all of a sudden out of nowhere, like two men are like around my car, like already like working on it and like brushing the snow away and like trying to scrape the ice. And I was like, what? Oh my God, this is like these angels have descended upon me. And I get out of the car to see what's happening because it's like all the snow is blowing around too. So it's kind of confusing and disorienting. And it's my table. They were like, they just happened to be parked right behind me. And like, I don't know whether they just took a chance to see if like somebody from the restaurant was like about to come out into the iced car. They just seemed really ready for it because as soon as like I came out, it's like they jumped out and they had the tools and everything ready. I was like, oh my God, <laughs> like angels arranged this, you guys. That, that was um, a Hanukkah miracle. Ooh, another Hanukkah miracle. Um, it's a very small one. But the, the other day I needed some red nail polish um, to like touch up my nails to go to work. And I did not have time to go out and run out and buy a new red polish. And I was out of polish. Like I was down at the end of all the bottles. So I couldn't get it to come out. And I was like, I just know if I go upstairs and like look at my closet, like there's going to be some random old bottle of red polish that I've forgotten about. And sure enough, I like reached in, I put my hand in a basket and I pulled out two bottles of Red Hot Tamale Revlon from about 2010 and it wasn't <laughs> dried out. So I had nail polish. <laughs> And I didn't have to go to the store. Isn't that a miracle? <laughs> oh my God. You guys, happy Hanukkah. It's night five. We are here for our romance oracle reading. It is Thirsty Thursday. C'est jaldi es soif. Oh, look at, hold on you guys. My friend at work bought me three really awesome Kabbalah books that are like, they're like legit magic books, so they're rare. Like, it's hard to find like books like this, but oh my God, I was like so moved. It was the sweetest, thoughtful thing. They're nice and heavy too. I'm looking forward to starting to read them. All right, so what do we need to know for the week ahead for our romantic lives? What is happening, if anything? <laughs> what's good? Where can we get some? What do we need to know? What do we need to avoid? Hold on, it's too big of a clump. 
And then just ask for one at a time. Ooh, see, see what that was. What is that? Oh, passion. Oh, la la. Oh, oui, oui. <laughs> oh, monsieur, madame. <laughs> um, yay. Allow your heart to, and soul to sing with joy. I mean, I think regardless of whether or not you're feeling passionate about an individual, it's good to stoke your passion in general for life. Um, you know, I think that just being passionate about isolated things, like, I think it's better to just evoke a sense of passion within you that spills out into, like, every area. I think when you're trying to require like one thing to give you passion then I think that's where you get in trouble and I think that you you end up in a situation where you're trying to pull from something when really the source of what you want is within and so instead of looking for a job that makes you feel passionate or a purpose or a calling that makes you feel passionate or a person or a relationship that makes you feel passion, you know, and passionate. Try to figure out how, what it is that it takes your soul to be nourished with in order to feel more passionate, generally speaking. And then I think that you will have a different lens in which you're like looking at things and experiencing things and things will be more enjoyable. Things will be more meaningful. There will be more depth to them. Like, <clears throat> okay, when there's like a foodie and a, and a wine person at the table and they go out to dinner with a person who's like not a wine person, they don't care about food, like they're just like McDonald's people, like they can both go to a restaurant the same and sit at the same table and the food person who's like, oh my gosh, I love all of this. I love the way everything, you know, like all the, the pairings and like the flavors and everything layers upon everything else and they all bring, you know, each other out. But like the McDonald's person isn't going to have that experience, even at the same restaurant. They're going to be like, yeah, I don't get what the big deal is. Like, do you just not have a hamburger? Like, I just want to order a hamburger. Like, can you, yeah, a steak, well done, ketchup. And it's like, this is the same, like the person is always the same everywhere they go. And you can take them to the, the most beautiful restaurant in the world that should evoke some sort of like culinary passion but it doesn't matter because they're a McDonald's person. They just want a burnt hamburger or like a burnt steak and some ketchup, no matter where, right? So <clears throat> it's not like, like when you want your life to give you passion, then you're always going to be fighting a losing battle because it's always going to be a tank that's going to run empty. Um, it's part of being in the state of effect consciousness as opposed to cause consciousness. When we're in a state of cause consciousness, like we're not waiting for our circumstances to make us feel things. Instead, we choose the way that we want to feel and we discover what sort of things cultivate and sustain and nurture those feelings within us. And it has to do with living and being and doing and moving in a way that's authentic to you, right? It's like figuring out what what's really you, you know, and then like what doesn't matter to you. But then like double down on those things that really do matter and make sure that they are lifting you up and, you know, expanding you and enriching you and the things that aren't authentic to you, then don't waste your time and energy and resources on them. And because then that's how you feel burnt out in life. It's how you feel like you're running around and you're, you know, all your attention is spread thin and you're not getting any satisfaction, right? Because you're not giving your attention fully. You're not present in the experience. You're not using your senses, right? Have you thought about the fact that a sensual experience is something that you can be having all the time. It doesn't have to be romantic. It doesn't have to be sexual. 
But I think that <clears throat> for people who are more sensually aware and involved with their life, they have more passion, right? Ooh, I'm gonna get the good hand soap so that it smells wonderful when I'm like washing my hands, right? That person, they like to suck the bone marrow out of life, right? You know what I mean? So you see what I'm saying? So cultivate passion, even in the small things, even in the big things, right? For instance, um, I was, I was arrested once, um, well, more than once, but not for anything serious. <laughs> they, were, they were all very minor, dumb, like, how does anybody get arrested for this kind of thing, kind of situation. But I remember, like, one of the times <laughs> I was in jail, I was like, oh, this is so awful. Everything's so dirty and ugly. <laughs> I was like, who, does anybody clean this place? Like, there was, like, a jelly stain on the floor. I'm pretty sure it had been there for, like, 20 years. And it was just disgusting. And that was one of the things that was the most disturbing to me about the thought of having to be in that place for any amount of time. I was like, oh, I cannot handle being around ugly environments. Now, when I think about that now, yeah, it makes sense. But then I, I think about, oh, there were certain jobs that I had for a while and I hated that job. And I forgot that part of the reason I hated it was because it was such an ugly place to be. And I didn't have any visual stimuli around all the time. And there was no like, nothing warm about the environment. It was just like hideous. And that made me really miserable. And so it's weird. It's like, if you don't know what makes you tick, then you don't realize what makes you feel passionate or how, however, what, or rather what makes you not feel passion, right? What takes away your passion? What feels like you feel dried up and turned off, right? So consider that. Um, and then also, you you may be meeting a uh, you know a little, a little hottie patati, let's <laughs> hope, <So, laughs> maybe. Uh, but stoke your passion for yourself, and then you'll be more like vibing passion, and then you'll be like sending out that that passionate signal, and hopefully attracting something that matches your authentic vibration. All right, what else do we need to know about this passion? Ooh, I got two cards that fell out. Oh my God, it's like, if, is it the same thing? She's wearing the like similar, like she looks very similar. These people, <laughs> they're heaving embrace. This art, it's too much. Um, past life relationship, you have known each other before. Okay, hmm, maybe something's developing here. Okay, so maybe there is something, some passion stirring. Or maybe it's coming. Maybe this is not a person that you know yet. But something will stir your passion. <clears throat> and it could be that you have known this person before. Or your souls already are getting acquainted even though your physicalness isn't. Um, or you may have already met in the past in this life. It's possible. Okay. So what else came up with it? Ooh, let go of control issues. Allow the situation to unfold naturally. Hmm. <laughs> well, what do we have here, people? What have we got here? A situation feels like it's developing. You know, I always try to be like super just like spiritual about this and try not to get too sensational, but I almost feel like this might be literally like so <laughs> there's somebody. Ooh. New love. I was going to say, literally, we might be meeting someone or there might be somebody with a big crush. Okay, so new love. A new person has stirred your romantic feelings and make the effort. Great love is worth taking the steps that you're guided to take. <sighs> All right, people. All right. It's time to have that John Cusack moment where you hold up the boom box. <clears throat> Okay, we've got passion, we got past life. Somebody might be coming back around that you've either known before in the past or in a past life. Or your souls may already be like in cahoots trying to figure out how to like get your bodies to cross paths. Let go of control issues. The best thing to do to let spirit and your angels help guide you towards these meetings is to not be too rigid or controlling. For instance, if you're trying to get ready to go do something and for some reason you just keep stalling or something keeps slowing you down, maybe it's because you have to like 
the universe is trying to time you correctly. But if you're being super controlling about that, then you're not allowing that timeline to like adjust. You're going to be like trying to make it on to, on the time that you had set already. Do you see what I'm saying? Or like for instance, if plans change or something, right? And it, you something falls through, like don't be too rigid. Just be willing to go with the flow and see where see where life is taking you. Um, invite the universe to help you with your love life and to like steer you in the right direction. But when you do that, you kind of <laughs> you can't um, question every step. You can't fight and reason and like look for logic in every step. You just kind of have to trust. Like if you get a ping or like um, an impulse or something to check something out or go somewhere or send someone a certain message or something like that. Like maybe just follow up and see, just see, just take a chance, make the effort. Um, new love is wanting to come in. So, you know, I know sometimes it's hard to make that move, but if it goes horribly wrong, then at least you're like, got that option out of the way and you can make way for the new love that's trying to come in. And apparently, gonna be very, very passionate look look at these oh not that guy <laughs> he's like he looks like he has control issues the sultan over there who are we oh wait where's our oh yeah that's what i'm talking about this guy can't get over it <laughs> this is like romance novel cover central passion past life relationships let go of control issues and make the effort. All right, you guys, like take your shot. Let you, let the chips fall where they may. And if they fall <laughs> to pieces, then so be it. All right, well, I hope that you guys have a warm and cozy night. This sweater is like the warmest, best thing that's ever happened to me right now. Um, be safe in, if you're driving in icy conditions and ooh, got a notification, get rid of that. And yeah, happy Hanukkah and Christmas is imminent. <laughs> Ciao.